Kristen, this is uh, Adina. Adina is the chair of the uh, downtown Central chapter, and, uh, and um, she went to the council as well. Uh, Kristen Longchamp. My number one worry was the weather and that was taken care of, so thank you very much. My name is Anthony Quinn and I'm the manager of community development for CARP. CARP is a national, not-for-profit, non-partisan advocacy association representing Canadians as we age. And today, October 1st, marks the second year that the federal government has celebrated October 1st as the National Seniors Day. At the same time, for over two decades, the United Nations has celebrated October 1st as the International Day of Older Persons. So we're here this afternoon to celebrate the contributions of older persons, past, present, and in the future of the City of Toronto. Uh, representing Torontonians here today are the chairs of our four CARP chapters in the Toronto area. We have Max Winter from the North York Toronto chapter. Max, stand up and say hello, thank you. From the Etobicoke Toronto chapter, we have Linda Robb, who's the vice chair of the, of the Toronto Etobicoke chapter. We have Athena LeBeau to my left. She is the chair of the downtown Toronto chapter. And last but not least, Gary Butler is the chair of the Scarborough chapter. I see Gary in the back right there. So thank you very much. So all told, CARP has almost 40,000 members in Toronto and over 300,000 in Canada. And this flag raising is being replicated in 22 cities across Canada from St. John's to Victoria. I also want to recognize our special guests that are in the audience with us. We have the Senator from Toronto, the former Mayor of Toronto, Art Eggleton. Thank you very much for coming with us today. We have City Councillor from St. Paul's, Josh Matlow is here in the front row here. Uh, we're expecting the city councillor from Trinity Spinata, Adam Vaughn, to be with us shortly. He is at a major announcement, I believe, is going on down by the Murdish Village, so, or the King Street West, so he'll be here shortly. We have a uh, councillor from Parkdale High Park, High Park, Sarah Doucette is here. Thank you very much for coming. And I see that uh, Senator, uh, the councillor from Toronto Centre, Rosedale, Kristen Wong Tan is here. Thank you for coming. And a couple of uh, late arrivals that I wasn't expecting, but I'm very glad to have him. Council Raymond Cho is here. Thank you, Raymond. He was at our Starbucks chapter meeting a few months back. And Councillor Doug Ford is joined as well for the protocol. Thank you very much. So uh, I'd like to. Pardon me? Hello, Mary. So I didn't know you were here, Mary. Thank you for coming. Mary, if I could ask for Ward 29. Thank you. And uh, the current president, Mr. Moses Snyder, is here as well. In Seattle. So with that, I'd like to introduce the current vice president of advocacy, Susan Ng, to give you some updates on what's happening with CARP in the city of Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here this morning. It's a wonderful day, and I think that holds a lot of promise for all of us. Um, it's, we use the occasion of the National Seniors Day. It is only two years old, and frankly, when it was first announced, a lot of us thought, so what does that do? But what it does do is give us all an opportunity to stop for a moment and think about what we're doing for Canadians as we all age. And contrary to popular opinion, we all will age. And that's the one thing that creates a very large uh, demographic for all of us to, to work with. It used to be that people thought, well, I'm not joining CARP, I'm not old enough. And I look at them and I say, well, if I'm old enough, you're old enough. But still, the rea reality is, is that these are issues that, yes, concern older Canadians first, but their families right there, right after them. And through their families, collectively, to the city, to the province, to the country. There are responsibilities that we individually will take as we look after our loved ones, but the responsibility that we focus on as advocates is to ensure that our government systems also take their part and carry out their responsibility. So at the federal level, we were successful at part to get some support for the lowest income seniors. They've introduced a caregiver tax credit. 
to focus on getting rid of mandatory retirement at the federal level. Tomorrow, I'm going to Ottawa to speak in favor of a bill to increase sentencing for elder abuse, something that we specifically asked for. So you see, our work is target, that targets the federal government, yes. But of course, the provincial government has its responsibility. It, we have to focus on the healthcare system, which after all now, we falls to all of the provinces to make sure that the healthcare system we've grown to support and to love, we find now wanting in being able to deal with our challenges as we want to stay out of institutions, we want to stay out of hospitals, we want to stay healthy all of our lives. And if we have a fall, a stroke, a diagnosis we don't like, we want to meet those challenges in our own homes. And the technology and the systems exist for us to do that. So there's no reason why we hear in the star yesterday that a person who happened to outlive her allotment of hours is going to have them cut off as she faces the end of her life. We're not that kind of a country, province, or city. So I'm not letting the city councillors off the hook, and I'm pleased to see so many of them here. Um, two years ago, there was an election for mayor in this uh, uh, city, and CARP hosted its first ever mayoral debate. We asked all the candidates to sign on to a pledge to, if they became mayor, to uh, to lead the city in becoming an age-friendly city, in fact, a model age-friendly city. And here we have some of the city builders of this city that you, all of you will remember, of course, Art Eggleton, the most notable mayor in the history of Toronto, soon to be replaced by maybe the next most notable mayor in the history of this city, but also Moses Neimer, who, the two of them, when they overlapped in their time, built the city to what it is. Moses, from outside city government, set a real image of this city and how we saw ourselves, especially its diverse communities. The first time ever anybody of color ever appeared in front of the cameras instead of just behind. And that is important today, and it continues to be important as we face our challenges. So in 2010, when we had our mayor's debate, we had a pledge, and we asked all the candidates if they would pledge the next city, the city of Toronto, the model a friendly city, the one that had universal accessibility, universal mobility, that we would look at all of our government policies through the lens of an older person, the things that we need and want and expect, and to name an age friendly champion for the city. So at the time, the candidates, of course, signed. What could they could do? Not they could not do otherwise. But many of these things have not yet been achieved. And so we're asking everybody here, especially those who hold public office, who have, who have the position of power, to sign the pledge again, so that we can see that in the very near future, there will in fact be Toronto as the model age-friendly city. So I'm not, <laughs> thank you. So I'm not going to ask them to come up here right now. This is what it looks like, and we'll have people sign over there after you've had your moment to speak. Thank you very much for being here. And do I have a duty to introduce anybody? All right, thank you. You see, I take instructions very well <laughs> once I know what they are. Um, I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce Art Eggleton. I already have, and I've uh, talked to you about why he's important in the city. No, he is, indeed, to everybody assembled here, needs no introduction. And uh, his time as mayor was memorable, and then he was in government, and, I said, and now he is a senator, and I run, in, I run into him in the halls of power all the time, and he's here today to remind us what the city was all about. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to, uh, to be with you today, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Bob Ray and the Liberal Party of uh, Canada to join you in celebrating this National uh, Seniors Day. It gives us an opportunity to focus on people past and present who have done a lot to make this city and this country what it is today and a place that we can be extremely uh, proud of. We uh, also in, in our party are, are celebrating it uh, by noting some of the things that we've been able to implement in the past such as the, the National Health Care Act, the Medicare program was first uh, put into federal legislation uh, by one of our governments, uh, the Canada Pension Plan, 
uh, many of the changes and improvements to the Old Age Security Act uh, over the years. And of course, there's also the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, uh, which said that people cannot discriminate, be discriminated against on the basis of age amongst a number of other things as well. And it's that, it's that cornerstone of uh, the Charter that is, is helping to fight ageism uh, that we frequently experience uh, in our city and in our country. But while uh, there's lots to celebrate, uh, there's also a lot to be done. Uh, we uh, still have too many seniors living below the poverty line. Now, a number of years ago, when the current old age security legislation was brought into effect, complete with a guaranteed income supplement, it took a lot of people out of poverty. It was a, a great achievement uh, in this country, and governments of different stripes over the years uh, supported those kind of measures. But now we see some slippage. We see some people, uh, one of the most vulnerable groups, for example, is single women, senior single women, who are slipping uh, below the poverty line. Then there's a lot of people who, whose investments in pension plans and RRSPs took a big hit uh, in this recession. And it was a wake-up call for a lot of people that said, well, you know, do we really have enough money to be able to retire? And a lot of people have come to the conclusion they don't. So there's a lot of people that are continuing to work uh, beyond 65 because they have to. Uh, some of them want to, of course, and, you know, people that are 65 or 70, uh, 69 in my case, say, well, I, I don't feel a day over 50, so I, I'll keep going for a long time. I'll never stop work. I have, I'll just keep working. If it isn't the Senate, it'll be something else. Who knows? But um, I think... Uh, People should have that option. I, I was sorry when the government announced it was going from 65 to 67 in terms of uh, the retirement age for Canada Pension Plan because uh, and old age security because I think uh, uh, some people may prefer that, but there are some people who don't have the physical ability because of the kind of work they do to, to go beyond uh, 65. But we've got some time to review uh, all of that kind of thing. And then there's housing. You know, there's over 4 million people in this city, in this country, not in this city, 4 million people in this country who don't have decent, affordable housing. And a lot of them are seniors. But they're people of all ages. Housing, to me, is a, a fundamental right, and it's something that I think uh, we need to have all government levels paying more attention to. And then there's finally health care. Uh, Susan mentioned health care. Uh, it's time to bring our health care system up to date. It was created a long time ago when acute care and the visit to the, the doctor was the main thing to focus on. But now there's a lot of, most people and most money from the health care system is going into chronic care. And chronic care requires a lot of different things. Uh, it requires some primary care reform so that people will have access to not just a doctor, but teams of people, nurses and other people, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, people that can help them with a wide range of uh, challenges uh, uh, that they face. It also means home care. A lot of people don't want to spend time in a hospital or any more time in a hospital than, than they need to. And we need to get our system better focused on home care as part of the uh, solution. Uh, Susan mentioned uh, the caregiver, caregiver credit, which CARP uh, worked on, the family caregiver credit. Well, I would add to that that we should make the caregiver credit refundable. Because right now, the way it is, it does help middle class people, but there are a lot of low income people that can't take advantage of it. They don't have the income that they get the tax advantage. So caregiver credits, I think, are very important because there's so many people younger seniors and, and family members, daughters, brothers, sisters, etc., who pour a lot of their effort and their part into uh, helping uh, to, to build a home care system. So I think we need to adapt our health care uh, system to that. And then there's long-term care, palliative care uh, facilities that are also uh, needed to be a part of this. And the bottom line, I think, of all of this is that we all have to work together on it. CARP works on it, uh, helps to 
bring the issues to the attention of the public and the attention of government. And that's a good thing. And I know with Moses and Susan, they'll continue to do that. I've never known them to do anything else but do the right thing and keep pushing their head. And I'm sure that all of you who are part of TARP are, are going to do that uh, uh, as well. But I don't think the, the government can just write a check and walk away. I think all levels of government uh, have to be a part of finding the solutions and have to work together as a team, federal, provincial, local governments, and uh, the community uh, organizations such as TARP. Uh, that's the way we're going to help make sure that into the future we have a city and a country that is going to be livable for seniors. It's going to be inclusionary for seniors. Inclusion, social inclusion, is an important part of this city. It's an important part of uh, this country. And we don't want to leave anybody out. And we don't want to, today, as we reflect on seniors, certainly leave them out. We want seniors to feel safe, comfortable, well-housed, health care systems that recognize that they're living longer, thank goodness, and there's more of them, thank goodness, and uh, let's make sure that we do the right thing for our seniors so that we not only can celebrate today what's been done in the past, but in the future when we get together, we can celebrate even more things. Thanks very much. Very wise words. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite Councillor Doug Ford to come up and speak for a few minutes, please. Thank you, Doug. Well, I think I'm going to keep it short here. <laughs> First of all, I, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming today. I want to thank Clark for inviting us. And uh, as I, as you saw, I did sign on. I, I do believe in supporting seniors throughout the throughout the city and. I got to agree with the the mayor, or should I call you mayor senator? <laughs> you know, all levels of government have to work together, be it the federal, provincial, and municipal governments, in supporting the needs of the seniors. Uh, my colleagues here uh, from council, uh, we we have the opportunity to to go visit seniors. Uh, unlike the the feds, that they're they're kind of up in Ottawa, they they don't have day to day. Uh, action with seniors going into their houses as simple as even the, the number one concern in the winter that I see is a senior getting their, their driveway shoveled or their, their sidewalk shoveled that, that's a that's a big concern it may not be a big concern for the average household but for them it is a big concern and and again folks thank you very much um, and uh, we'll do everything we can to support CARP uh, in any way, our, our doors open. Feel free to give Rob or myself a call, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I'd like to uh, invite Mr. Matlow to come and speak with us and tell us what's going on with the, the city strategy right now for seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator. Mr. Zimer, my colleagues, uh, CART members, and all residents who have uh, a deep interest in making sure that we create a truly age-friendly city, um, I thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I know my colleagues feel the same way. Um, our council decided early in this term to unanimously support a recommendation to start moving on creating a senior strategy for Toronto. And as we all know, when we create a senior strategy, it's not just for seniors. To create an age-friendly city, an accessible city, means that whether you are a senior, whether you're a, mom, a young mom and dad with a stroller, if you are somebody with a disability, you know that we are creating a strategy that will create a city that reflects the very people who live here, respects them, and makes sure that it is accessible for all. And that's what we're working on. So we created a subcommittee called the Seniors uh, Strategy Subcommittee. And this subcommittee is working very closely with our bureaucracy, our staff, to focus on the priorities that we are hearing from seniors and their families and caregivers across the city. From a diverse array of neighborhoods and backgrounds, economic means, ethnicities, sexual orientations, etc. We want to make sure that we put together a strategy that not only reflects the people who live here and will live here, but also a strategy that can actually get done. Now we all know that there have been far too many reports on a whole number of issues, 
that are, are uh, announced with a, with, a, with a big bang, a lot, of, uh, a lot of notice. And then somehow they always seem to fall into the dusty archives of history, and we sometimes refer to them as we discuss how we want to move forward. The two facets of this plan is both to look at what we can do with other levels of government to make sure that we're cooperative and we move forward, but more importantly, we're also looking at the kind of things that we can do and just get done at the municipal level so we're not dependent on somebody else writing a check. So we're looking at everything from social policy, housing, how we can provide services close to your home, how you can stay in your home longer, to those so-called little things that are actually, as my colleague Councillor Ford said, which really are the big things to, to many seniors, just, such as maybe putting a few more benches along our sidewalk so you can have a rest making sure that our parks are more accessible. How long should the crosswalks be when you need to get, uh, get across a busy arterial road? How do we design our sidewalks and our buildings so that they are genuinely accessible? That one little step that somebody may hop over might be a mountain to climb for another, and when you have a little pothole or a crack in a sidewalk that hasn't been addressed, that could be a fall that could be tragic for another. And those are the kind of things that we need to consider. So I simply want to thank CARP for your ongoing advocacy, for pushing us forward, for asking us to create an age-friendly city. And as city councillors, I know, and this is unanimous, you hear a lot about the division sometimes, the left and the right, the downtown, the suburbs. What I can tell you is this. Every member of council, together, knows that this is a prior or priority, knows that this is something we need to get done. In the next 20 years, one in five of us are going to be over the, over the age of 65. And I know that we and our children, our grandchildren, will be very grateful to the work that we do together. We can't do it without you. And I thank you so much for the advocacy that you provide to make sure that we actually get it done this time. Thank you very much, and happy National Seniors Day. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Josh. So when Moses Neimer took over the uh, presidentship of CARP four years ago, I believe we had 10 CARP chapters in Canada, and we're up to 56 chapters across Canada in those the short years. And one of the reasons is the great volunteer network we have of members across Canada. I'd like to introduce the chair of the downtown Toronto chapter, Adina LeBeau. Thank you, thank you, Anthony, and hi to everybody. So glad you could join us here today. My name is Adina LeBeau, and I am the chairperson of the downtown Toronto CARP chapter. I'm delighted to be here to raise CARP's flag in celebration of National Seniors Day. I joined CARP two years ago because I saw the exciting direction CARP was taking under the leadership of Moses Nyman. I was struck by the simplicity and strength of the new vision of aging. And as a Zoomer myself, I wanted to be part of this new spirit and value and be part of a large and growing CARP community. So I volunteered to launch CARP's first chapter in Toronto. There are now 56 chapters across Canada, as Anthony said, and there are four chapters right here in Toronto. My colleagues from Etobicoke, Scarborough, and North York are here today, and I speak on behalf of us all. We represent CARP at the grassroots level. Advancing CARP's mission and engaging in volunteer activities that support Canadians as we age. Our chapters are clubhouses for CARP members, providing a way for members to put their talent, creativity, energy, knowledge, and sense of community spirit to work. And there is lots of work yet to be done. Getting involved with CARP and launching the downtown chapter of CARP has been so much fun and I'm very proud of what our chapter and the others here in Toronto have accomplished so far and you have to understand we've just started this is just the beginning there's lots more to happen and I'm also very proud to be here today representing our chapters to help CARP raise its flag at National Seniors Day and if there's anyone here who is not a CARP member yet we can sign you up. Over at that table, we have a special discounted price for you today. Thank you so much. And 
also on our agenda today is uh, Councillor Adam Vaughn from Trinity Spadina. He has just rushed over from his last event and we asked him to join us here on the stage. Thank you very much, Adam. Didn't recognize Anthony without the ponytail. <laughs> we worked years ago at, at the City TV together when, when uh, Anthony, of course, worked with, uh, with Moses, uh, one of the great senior citizens of our, of our city. Although I'm not sure he wanted me to say that, by the way, but uh, a Zoomer, a Zoomer. At any rate, uh, when, when uh, Susan Ng, who's been um, a, a voice of, of uh, clarity on issues facing uh, an aging population in this city, asked me to present the, to be here today to talk about it, um, it was a, a quick yes, not just because um, I share many of the values that Susan embodies and, and has provided as leadership, but because we know that in an aging population, disabilities become a critical feature and a critical challenge to, to address. And as the chair of the Disability Advisory Committee of the city, uh, we have to provide housing and services for people with different abilities very quickly. Because if we don't, an aging population will not be able to work, will not be able to play, and will not be able to celebrate all the values that our city has embraced for many, many years. And so today's flag raising is not just about seniors, although we will all get there one day. It is about creating capacity in people as they age so that the wisdom, the experience, the humor, and the life values that they have embodied in building this great city continue to be contributed to the construction of this city. And that's why we're here today to celebrate the flag raising. It's why we embrace the vision that, that uh, Moses has brought to the city in many different ways and through the Zoomer organization has said, we need more, not less from our population. But City Hall and governments must provide the platform for more to happen. And, and that uh, is the responsibility that all of us as councillors have, is to make this city more open, more accessible, more equal, uh, and more open to the contributions that all citizens must make, can make, and with the leadership of CARP, will make. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to introduce Adam's former boss, my current boss, the president of CARP, the CEO of Zoomer Media Limited, Moses Knight. George Burns. Everybody knows George Burns. He was a rather droll comedian of the uh, mid-century. He said, if I'd known how long I was going to live, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> and, and he was emblematic of a time when people turning a hundred was a rare event. Uh, so rare that it appeared to be a gift from God, so rare that the Queen would handwrite salutations to every person living in the Commonwealth who turned a hundred. Well, that time is long gone, and we now experience the miracle of radical longevity, of an enormous extension in life expectancy, which is often viewed somewhat with alarm when in fact it is an enormous achievement. And I'm here to try and remind all of us that um, the achievement of old age is actually the culmination of the drive of civilization. It is what progress in education or nutrition or medicine has led us to. And I'm here to remind everybody that these years, these Zoomer years, are also years of mastery. They're years of leisure and pleasure and creativity and productivity and, and the great joy that can be derived from giving back. So I'm pleased to hoist this flag in the name of a phenomenon that's only just now coming into view. We stand on the threshold of a very brave new world where half the babies born today have a good shot at reaching a hundred. The, the implications of that for society are only just coming to be understood. The challenges are just being defined. The answers are being formed in well, events such as this, and CARP is there to educate, to advocate, and to monitor progress so that the guideposts that we set up about how people are supposed to behave in this new situation are positive ones 
and creative ones that contribute to a good life for all of us. So, it is my great pleasure to call all of you who want to hoist this chain to come up and join me. I'm here to proclaim that carp is the new cool. And Zuma is its voice. So come on up here and let's get this flag up the pole. Ask the councillors to please join Moses and the senators for this flag raising. Anybody else would like to come and join us as well? You're welcome to come up. Thank you. 